Despite featuring many of the same locations, Clear Sky and Shadow of Chernobyl have very different environments and territories, because a lot have happened between the two games. Hello stalkers, and welcome to the anomalous dugout. In this video, we will take a look at all the important events that took place between Clear Sky and Shadow of Chernobyl, in order to understand why the two games are so different. Before getting into the details, there are some points that need to be clarified. First of all, many locations, characters and other elements that appeared in Clear Sky seem to have disappeared in Shadow of Chernobyl, such as the Great Swamp or the Renegades faction. But this does not mean that these things are completely gone at the time of Shadow of Chernobyl. For locations, it is possible that they have become less accessible because of new anomalies formed during emissions, or simply the marked one had no reason to visit these areas during the events of Shadow of Chernobyl. And for characters, it is important to remember that not all stalkers live in the zone permanently, which means that many individuals come to the zone only for specific amount of times before getting back to the outside world. Because of that, characters that were present in Clear Sky and not present in Shadow of Chernobyl did not necessarily die between the two games. Also, the fact that the zone in Clear Sky is much more populated than in Shadow of Chernobyl can be simply explained by the timing of emissions. Indeed, a huge blowout happened just at the beginning of Clear Sky, spawning a ton of fresh new artifacts, opening new paths to previously unexplored areas, and pushing the factions to wage war to redefine their influence over these changed territories. Meanwhile, it is not known when the last blowout happened at the start of Shadow of Chernobyl, but most likely it was some month ago, and the zone has been quite stable since then. With that out of the way, let's take a look at everything that happened, that we know of. During the events of Clear Sky, a major conflict took place between the loners and the military, during which the stalkers took control over most of the cordon and captured the army commander, Major Kaletsky, who was jailed inside the fortified loner base. Depending on the actions of the player as the mercenary Scar, Kaletsky either escaped the loners or was probably executed by them. But in either case, something happened after Clear Sky that led to the downfall of the loners. In Shadow of Chernobyl, we can see that their base was completely destroyed. Only the walls and the roof of the farm remain. Maybe they were defeated by the bandits, as they were at war with them as well. However, a punitive raid by the military seems to be a more plausible explanation. Indeed, stalkers in Shadow of Chernobyl show more respect towards the army, especially in the Cordon, where the new commander, Major Kuznetsov, has control over the bridge. And the army is not afraid to launch deadly operations against stalkers, as it can be seen in the Agroprom. So the loner base in the Cordon was left to crumble, and most likely their leader, Feather Valerian, died during these events as well. At the time of Clear Sky, the bandit faction was quite well organized, with a large base in the garbage, and an undisputed leader called Yoga. They controlled a large portion of the garbage, robbing stalkers at the entrances and forcing prisoners to work for them in the Anomalous Vehicle Graveyard. Despite their power, the bandits had two main problems. First, the stalkers were tired of the bandit actions and started counter-attacking, following the example of Wild Nabr, who attacked the bandit concentration camp. And second, the garbage was located exactly between the Freedom and Duty territories, 
thus quickly becoming a war zone for these factions as well. Because of this, several things happened. The Bandit base was abandoned and their organization shattered, but they somehow created a new base in the place of Freedom's old base in the Dark Valley, and their leader Yoga was replaced by their barman, Borov. It is not known if the bandits managed to kick Freedom out of the Dark Valley, or if they had already left the place, and how exactly Borov managed to replace Yoga, but it is possible that he was killed, maybe by Borov himself. In any case, the consequences were that the bandits scattered their forces and became even more hostile to stalkers, regularly attacking the garbage that is a heavily contested area, as it can be seen in Shadow of Chernobyl. Even the popular flea market was somehow destroyed in the midst of all of this. As for Borov, he gained a lot of weight, which is a rare thing in the zone. As we just mentioned, the Freedom Faction left their base in the Dark Valley, but hopefully for them, they had secured the army warehouses during the events of Clear Sky. They indeed wiped out the remaining soldiers and installed their new base inside the large military complex, much further north than their previous location. This allows them to be closer to the center of the zone than their rivals, Beauty, but at the same time, they have no influence over the southern areas, which Duty has. Also, Freedom experts took upon themselves to defend the barrier, the last bit of terrain before the brain scorcher, from which mutants and monolith forces regularly attack. Moreover, the former leader and founder of Freedom, Chekhov, was replaced by Lukash, and according to a stash description from Shadow of Chernobyl, it is likely that Chekhov died in Pripyat after a disastrous expedition beyond the brain scorcher. And to wrap up with freedom, they realized that their war with duty was not worth it at all, and duty realized the same thing as well, and that led to a ceasefire between the two factions. The specific terms of the agreement are not known, but it appears to only prevent a large-scale conflict, as small skirmishes opposing duty and freedom still take place. Speaking of duty, they too moved their base after the events of Clear Sky. They used to control the territory of the Agroprom Institute, but the area was quite dangerous at the time, flooding with mutants crawling from the underground. This could have been one of the reasons for their departure, even though the help of Scar allowed the situation to improve. Anyway, they made their new headquarters in Rostock near the bar, a very strategic position, both to launch raids and have the most influence on neutral stalkers. The former General Krylov, second leader of duty, was also replaced by General Voronin, but we don't know what happened to him. It is possible he simply resigned, since the death of a duty general, apart from its founder Tchenko, is never mentioned. With duty gone, the military quickly stepped in to take control over the institute. Maybe the army convinced them to leave, either by force or by some sort of secret deal, which is possible since there are rumors that duty has important contacts within the military. Regardless of how this happened, the nearby stalker base was also affected by this change, and most of the equipment, along with the loner leader, Orest, disappeared before the events of Shadow of Chernobyl. They might have followed duty to Rostock, or scattered elsewhere, but the buildings were still used by stalkers, and particularly by Mole's group, until the army decided to raid it, 
as it is depicted in Shadow of Chernobyl. So, what is the military doing here exactly? Well, according to the documents marked one stole from them for the traders, the army was conducting an investigation as part of Project Truth, a large operation by officials to try to uncover the real secrets behind the zone and its laboratories. Still, according to these files, this investigation was carried out from the 12th to the 25th of May 2012. But this is surprising, because Shadow of Chernobyl starts on May the 1st. If the dates are correct, this means that the Agroprom operation began after the marked one woke up in Sidrovich's bunker, and that almost a month passed before he received the task to steal the military documents from the trader. After years of research, it was finally confirmed during the events of Clear Sky that the Psi emissions from the Yentar factory are produced by a man-made device. Indeed, some technical documentation was found which allowed the scientists, led by Professor Sakharov, to better understand the nature of the Psi emissions, and eventually, a mission led by Lefty managed to restart the machine's cooling system, reducing the deadly emissions to a minimal state. After that, it was expected for Yentar to become a more welcoming place, where scientists could finally study the factory in peace. But it is obvious from the state of the area in Shadow of Chernobyl that none of that happened. Yentar was still crawling with zombies and mutants, and almost no stalker was brave enough to come there anymore, while the scientists, left with no protection, stayed confined in their bunker, trembling in fear. So what the hell happened here? Simply put, the Psy missions went back to their full power. How? Well, it's possible that the cooling system broke again, this time beyond repair. But another explanation can directly be observed inside the factory, which is filled with the corpses of military and monolith soldiers. The common theory says that the monolith faction organized a mission to infiltrate the laboratory X-16 under the factory, and reprogram the Psy device to work at full power at all time. The military tried to stop them, but it appears that despite huge casualties on both sides, the monolith commando was successful. The fighting even involved a BTR armored vehicle, and we are not sure which faction used it. After that, the interest of the military for the Yentar area didn't decline, as they sent another group of Spetsnaz in the factory, at least according to Lukash. Quote, Just the other day, ten of those guys ran into Yentar, and only six returned with the three on their shoulders. Feng and Ghost are friends of Strelok, who went with him to the center of the zone just before clear sky. After the huge blowout that started the game, they left the wounded Strelok to doctor and started collecting electronic parts all across the zone in order to build two decoders that would allow them to open a mysterious door that they found inside the sarcophagus. Fang was being chased by the mercenary Scar and also got ambushed by bandits, but he managed to slip away, regroup with the ghost, and assemble the decoders. However, the two were not able to meet with Strelok again, as he decided to go back to the center of the zone alone, because he had the whole clear sky faction, as well as Scar after him. So, Ghost and Fang went to their meeting place in the army warehouses, but they were ambushed by a mercenary sniper who shot and supposedly killed Fang. If you are interested in the story of Strelok, Ghost and Fang, 
I suggest checking out my other videos on the subject. The links will be in the description. Getting back to Ghost. He was now left alone and decided to go to Yentar to run some jobs for the scientists. Not long before the marked one arrived in the area, Ghost went with the scientist Vasiliev inside the infamous Laboratory X-16 in an unsuccessful attempt to disable the Psi emissions. The operation went south as Ghost was hit by powerful emissions and Vasiliev panicked and ran away. They ended up both dead, Ghost being killed by a controller in the lab, and Vesiliev falling to zombies in the swamp after running to the exit. The last thing we need to discuss is the fate of the whole Clear Sky faction. A large part of the group managed to get to the power plant at the end of Clear Sky in an attempt to stop Strelok to reach the sarcophagus but their plan didn't work. A giant blowout occurred without any warning, catching all of them at once. The most likely outcome of this is that they all joined the monolith forces, which would contribute to the rise of the monolith faction as the largest and most powerful group in the zone at the time of Shadow of Chernobyl. Transforming them into mere zombies would uh, be a huge waste for such a large group of great fighters. And the final cutscene of the game shows them in the same corridor as Trelloc, which means they were indeed going to be brainwashed to serve the goals of the sea consciousness. As for the mercenary Scar, a popular theory says that he became Charon, the leader of the monolith forces in Shell of Chernobyl, but there is nothing to confirm that. Another, more obscure theory depicts the Sea Consciousness representative from Shadow of Chernobyl as Lebedev, the leader of Clear Sky, who would have joined the Sea Consciousness after being caught in the blowout. He would have had a specific treatment because he was a former member of the group, the scientists who created the zone by mistake. However, there is once again not really any evidence to back this up. Finally, the other members of Career Sky who were not present at the assault on the center of the zone seem to have disbanded and the faction was just erased and forgotten. Such members are, for example, Nimble, who started working for Sidrich, and Novikov, alias Grey, who can be seen again in Call of Pripyat working for the newly established science team in Jupiter. And there we go, that's basically everything important that happens between Clear Sky and Shadow of Chernobyl that we know of. I hope I didn't forget anything, and if that's the case or if you have any question, theories, suggestions or even critics to make, be sure to write that down in the comments below. Thank you for watching, stalkers. And goodbye. Конечно, пьяный. Ты себе требнули. Я бы за пять километров вас уроды обошел. Класс. Арфанови, ничего нет.